side to side the waving of your hands is your worship tonight for the miracles the signs the wonders deliverances breakthroughs for that which you are doing already and will yet do tonight we thank you thank you Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I assure you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, that tonight is truly your night. You will have an unforgettable experience in the presence of God amen. you believe that shout a louder amen. amen I came here determined in my spirit that no one who walked in here will go back the same way they came amen. and I know that God is set to do us good. My only charge for you tonight is that your heart be open. So many things will be happening in this place tonight. And I pray and hope that you will be maximally, you will be positioned to receive maximally. Don't be distracted tonight. It's not one of those nights when you should be distracted. Let your eyes, your gaze be on Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to spend five minutes praying. Do you love prayer? Yeah. Hold the hands of someone by your left and right, and we're going to be praying. You have a prayer language. This will be your time to begin to pray in the Spirit. But by all means, make sure that you are speaking to the Lord. We look to Yahweh. Keep praying. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh. You are praying in the spirit. Shade ke peke tos kala prande ke peratos. He prande ke pala kosha prande ke peratos yata. That means revival come. That means the heavens are open over Manchester, over the United Kingdom, across Europe. Sala ke peratos ka prande ke peratos yata. Someone is praying. You're interceding for your children. You're interceding for your nation. Ala kosha la gavras kabarante geber. Rante geberetus kone brante geberetus yata. Hallelujah. 
I'm going to ask Pastor Nath to sing one more song for us. Ask and I'll give the nations. This, this is a prophetic anthem. We're going to sing it over Europe. Hallelujah. It's, it's, a, it's a song that communicates that which God desires to see happen to the nations. And I want you to be very sensitive. Join along. As can now give the nations to you, O Lord. Does the wave the flag of your nation prophetically that the revival that has started here tonight will spread like wildfire? Are you waving the flag of your various your nations? Can now give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the island will see your light. I see the rising sun. We are declaring revival across the dead nations. That's our prayer, that's our desire tonight. Oh Lord, we ask for the nations. One last time. Oh Lord, we ask for the nations. I really believe that tonight some of you one of the reasons why the Lord allowed you to travel probably out of this continent for this conference is to take this fire of revival and take it back to your nations this fire this apostolic and prophetic fire you will be ignited tonight like the foxes of Samson and in the name of Jesus you will run to the camp of the enemy and cause havoc and bring great glory to the name of Jesus. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. Now before we sit, I want to minister to just two sets of people and then we'll be seated. This is a miracle service. While I sat back and Pastor Nat was ministering, I heard in my spirit depression and I had mental health. These two groups, I want to deal with these issues now. There are many, many people, probably you have loved ones and many who are here and those connected by way of television and the internet. There are people who have been plagued. I hope you know that mental health and depression are spirits. I'm about to pray and if you can, except if they are far beyond reach, I please want you to gently pick them out and just bring them to the front here. Ushers, please let's help so that we organize them so that they don't run around. Um, you, our safety is, is of, um, it's very important. I want to pray. Now, we thank God for medical doctors. We have a medical team here of professionals. But you see, even the doctors and medicine is coming to a point of recognition that many of these infirmities are powered by spirits and when they are powered by spirits it will take more than drugs it will take more than therapies and medical programs for complete liberty the bible says now the lord is that spirit young people who should not be depressed now are getting depressed uk we have to release this continent from these spirits this night 
so that we will not lose our children to this demon, this devil of depression. Now listen, I want to pray and the power of God will begin to fall on such people. Mental health, depression. When that happens, please I want you to just pick them out gently and bring them here. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Now in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I command the devil of depression, the devil of a, a poor mental health, every demonic oppression over your mind, Right now at the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus and you will be released from that devil now. Satan will come against you in the name of he who died and rose from the dead. Are you ready to shout Manchester? One, two, three, shout Jesus. I command those devils. I command those devils. Depression. Mental health. your lives now out of your minds now in the name of Jesus Christ out of your lives now we command that you let those people go we banish you from UK we banish you from Europe release our children in the name of Jesus release our sons and daughters release our families in the name of Jesus Christ. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Again, I'm declaring. If there is anyone here who has joined any wrong demonic fraternity and is now affecting your mind, by the power of the blood, I decree and declare, be released now. Be released now. Shake it, take a post, Oh, yes, be released now. Be released now. Be released now. Be released now. Hear me. My Bible says, and they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and the words of their testimonies right where you are I want you to begin to declare I declare my freedom I declare my liberty from depression go ahead and pray my liberty from depression in the name of Jesus any and all forms of mental health breakdown I declare release right now In the name of Jesus now hear me the waters have been stirred my goodness that deliverance fire is here now I want to pray for those in front and then we'll call another case I already my spirit is stirred up for all of you who are in front I stand by the apostolic and the prophetic in the name of Jesus the son of the living God and I command those devils never return to them again go Go, 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 go out of their destinies in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray. There are destinies here that have been tied under the influence of wicked spirits. I want to release you now. Listen, please hear me. These demon spirits are responsible for negative patterns. Patterns of failure. Patterns of defeat. Are we together? Do you believe in the power of Jesus? Now, when I count three, I want you to shout that name, Jesus. The name that is above every other name. And everything that does not name the name of Christ, it must let you go now. Now, hear me, please. Ushers, once the front is full, that's all right. 
and please you do not have to be an usher once someone is under the anointing close to you please do me a favor help to manage them just close to you so they do not injure themselves are we together on this father in the name of jesus by this prophetic de declaration and with the blast of the trumpet we decree and declare everyone who has been under the siege generational curses yokes of darkness spirits of ancestry infirmity by the power that raised christ from the dead at the count of three let god's people go now are you ready uk one two three shout jesus out of their lives now out of their destinies now out of their lives now Release their destinies now. Release businesses now. Release families now. We pass a decree in the realm of the spirit and we command it so. We command it so by the power of the Holy Ghost. hallelujah ladies and gentlemen listen to me listen to me the bible says say unto god how terrible art thou in thy ways it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves we are not only ministering deliverance but we are praying that genuine power will return to the church genuine power will return to our pulpit that the oppressed will not come and go back oppressed in the name of Jesus Christ we declare liberty by the Spirit of God hallelujah now I'm seeing in a vision I'm seeing people whose hands are tied this is what I'm seeing I hope you know your hand is a symbol of productivity and when your hands are tied in the spirit no matter how educated no matter how enlightened you will find out that doors continue to close can i release you now in the name of jesus everyone tied by witchcraft tied by every plague of darkness by the fire of the holy ghost be released now Hallelujah. Now, we'll be seated shortly, but the Lord is revealing, I'm seeing someone, you lost your job in February. You lost your job in February. And from that time, you've been having negative dreams. You've not been able to have another job. You lost, I, I, I presume that there might be many people, but this is a particular person you've been having all kinds of demonic dreams you lost your job in february who is that person please can we have another mic just you can just pass it to pastor jakes and then i'm hearing a name veronica who is that veronica 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 what's your name darling when did you lose your job? On the 1st of February. 1st of February. Yes. Do you have a job now? No. Can I pray for you? Yes, please. You believe in the power of the yes, Holy I Spirit? Do. Yes, I Go do. and write this month down July. July, amen, amen. That's my birthday. That's your birthday. Yes. Go and write it down. July, the Lord is visiting you. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy upon you. By July, your birthday, let a miracle come by the power of the Holy Ghost. What he says to one, he says to all. I prophesy to everyone here. May the Lord give you miracle jobs. May my God surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Veronica. Please. 
I want you to please cooperate with the protocol, cooperate with the ushers. I know that there are so many people who are all desperate for miracles, but please just be patient. We are here for you. If it's not your case, just be patient. And even when you are to come out, please be orderly. If they do prohibit you, don't fight them. Let's, let's be decent and then let's be orderly. Who is Veronica? My name is Veronica. All of you here? My dear, can I pray for you? Where are you from? Huh? I lost my job in February. That, that, it's all right. I want to pray for I you. I lost my job in February. Oh, you all lost your jobs. Oh, dear. Well, you are... Um, Praise the name of the Lord. Now, of course, I, I, I understand you're doing your best, but please just, um, just come out as I call your case. If it's not your case, please be patient. Again, I'm insisting that we be orderly so that we do not have anything that makes this place rowdy. Are we together? Veronica. I'm here, I'm Veronica. Don't worry, you're all Veronica. I'm going to pray for you. But for you who has lost your job, there's one of you here, the power of God is coming on you now. I just saw a spirit leave you. In the name of Jesus, let them go by the power of the Holy Ghost. Out of their lives now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Never to return again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You've had eight miscarriages. Eight. Please, please, I'm not saying if you've had a miscarriage, eight. This is the number, I know we prayed for people here, but there is a particular individual the Lord wants me to minister to, eight. You've had eight miscarriages. If you're that person, let me just speak over you. But let me pray over Veronica. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. I decree and declare, the Lord is saying, I should tell you, remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old, for behold, I do a new thing. The Lord is doing a new thing in your life, and I release that grace upon you. Everything that has held you, kept you bound, in Jesus' name, be released now. Be released now. Be released now. is Dan I presume that is Daniel Dan they call you Dan for short but I think you're Daniel or so Dan is there someone like that I just want to speak over your life and then we'll be seated who is that no this gentleman I'm seeing you are wearing you're wearing like a white a white Please verify, do we have? Shaba Sobaros Kadela Koshadi Apparatus. What is your name? Daniel. My name is Daniel. What is your name? What's your name? Daniel, my middle name. What is your own name? How can you call three people wearing white at the same time? All called Daniel. For someone here, probably the reason why you came here is to access genuine prophetic fire. Now listen, don't you think everyone is stage managing and faking this thing? No, no, no. There are people who fear God and are very, very serious. You can receive an authentic prophetic grace. Authentic prophetic grace. Are we together? Daniel. Let me pray for you. What do you do, my friend? Sorry, say it again, sir. What do you do? Um, I study and I'm doing my master's in law. You are another Daniel? Sure. Yes, sir. I'm Daniel. You are another Daniel. Yes, my name is Daniel. Let me pray for you. Do you believe that God is able to restore? 
I want to declare restoration upon you. You don't have to kneel. Please stand. In the name of Jesus, God who brought you out of this crowd. Hmm. There's someone, your child is not here, but your child is suffering from autism. Now, please be patient. Be patient. Listen. Just listen. I know that there might be people here trusting God for healing. The person I'm talking about, your child is not here, but your child is trusting God. In fact, that is the first prayer request you wrote. I'm, I'm seeing the Lord is revealing to me. This is the first request that you wrote. Please be patient. Please be patient. Let's not fight and make this place rowdy. Madam, where are you coming from? The woman crying. Chester, I came from Chester. You have a son? Yes. How old? Six years old. Six years old. <laughs> Do you believe in the power of hope? Yes. Shout Jesus as loud as Jesus! you can. Out of this family now, I curse that devil in the name of Jesus Christ. Ah. pray for you every one of you I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God I decree and declare over your life right now be free from every oppression be free from autism in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah please return back to your seats rejoicing give Jesus all the praise in the name of Jesus the son of the living God gentlemen the Lord brings you supernatural breakthrough restoration for you in Jesus name we pray Eight years in the name of Jesus we declare that it comes to an end now even by the power of the Holy Spirit as a result of this miracle service you will rejoice over your children in Jesus name amen and amen God bless you return to your seats rejoicing hallelujah give Jesus praise give Jesus praise are you excited about what, what the Lord is doing hallelujah praise the name of the Lord please be seated again blessings to those who are following from across the globe tonight is our final night together and we trust that what he's begun he will perfect in everyone's life if you believe that shout a loud amen I want to give a final charge and I please request that you lend me your attention do lend me your attention because tonight's message is very powerful the continuity of what God has begun tonight depends on this message hallelujah praise the name of the Lord by the way let me encourage everyone and that includes our global family do well to listen to the teachings all the teachings that have come in the course of this conference from yesterday this morning and this final session do well to make out time to listen again and again the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God tonight I'm teaching on the topic preserving territorial revival preserving territorial revivals 
Aleluya. I wrote here and I want to start by letting everyone know that kingdom advance is territorial. Kingdom advance is territorial. That means the advancement of the kingdom is territorial. God intends to advance his kingdom like I taught you yesterday that the project kingdom come, the project revival starts with the individual, then the house of God, then territories and regions. Hallelujah. Now, from a standpoint of revival, I wrote here, from a standpoint of revival, our mandate is to keep God consciousness, to keep righteousness and to keep the program of God alive across our assigned territories. Please listen very carefully. That means every believer in Manchester, every believer in the United Kingdom has a mandate to contribute towards the preservation of the move of God across this territory and every assigned territory. Perhaps it will be worth repeating again that I defined revival yesterday as a reawakening to true spirituality, a reawakening to righteousness, and a reawakening to genuine submission to the governing authority of the Christ. I repeat one more time. That revival is a reawakening to true spirituality, a reawakening to righteousness, and a reawakening to genuine submission to the governing authority of the Christ. And I did say yesterday that revival is threefold. Genuine, authentic revival is threefold. Number one, personal at a personal level where God deals with an individual bringing that individual to a point of brokenness to a point of repentance are we together and to a point of righteousness then the next level is where God deals with his church where God deals with his body bringing a restoration of righteousness a restoration of divine patterns back to the church and then finally territorial transformation this is the last and final phase of revival where the transformed individuals the transformed body the church now begins to spread that fire and it translates to all kinds of transformation economic transformation educational transformation political transformation this is God's idea of revival and if you were not here in the morning, I did teach about the church. And we said that the church is number one, a spiritual strategy. God's own invention. God's own strategy. The only strategy given the mandate to completely stop the manifestation of darkness upon the earth, the church. Number two, that the church refers to men and women who have willfully submitted to the governing authority of the Christ. Finally, that the church is an institution, an institution mandated to preserve truth, preserve righteousness, are we together? To communicate the love of the Father, a place for methodical mentorship of believers where doctrine is communicated with precision and with grace. I did say that you will always find God in his church. God is always found in his church. In fact, the Bible calls him the head of the church. Hallelujah. Now, please write this down. 
God's end time program. God's end time program. His apostolic end time program. Will require three categories of people. Please write. God's end time program will require three categories of people. And every one of you seated here tonight belongs to one or more or possibly all these categories. You are not, listen carefully, your relevance in this end time will be dependent on the degree to which you participate fully and actively in one or more of these categories. Are we together? These categories will define who will be relevant in the days to come or otherwise. Category number one, God's end time program will require men and women who belong to one or more of these categories. Number one, we call them the watchmen or prophetic intercessors. This is the first category, the watchmen slash prophetic intercessors. The program of God will never be made manifest across a territory until God finds men and women who understand the power and the art of prayer. Prophetic intercession. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turning from their wicked ways, it says, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land hallelujah in isaiah chapter 62 when you read from verse 1 to 7 just write for reference isaiah 62 from verse 1 to 7 it says for zion's sake i will not hold my peace and for jerusalem's sake i will not rest until the righteousness therefore go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth six more verses and the gentiles shall see thy righteousness he says and all kings thy glory and thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the lord shall name verse 3 it says thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the lord and a royal diadem in the hand of thy god verse 4 it says thou shalt no more be termed forsaken neither shall thy land be more any more be termed desolate but thou shalt be called Hephzibah, and thy land Beulah. For the Lord delighted in thee, and thy land shall be married. Verse 5. It says, For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. Verse 6. It said, I have set watchmen. For all the aforementioned to come to pass, I have set watchmen. Upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, O Manchester, O United Kingdom, it says, which shall never hold their peace, day or night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. Verse 7, it says, and give him no rest till he establish, until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Listen to me. When the devil wants to destroy a territory, he begins by attacking the ministry of prayer, attacking the watchmen and the prophetic intercessors, either through carelessness, through discouragement, through complacency. If you understand what I'm teaching you, you will be able to plant and sustain revival in any territory. Are we together? So the watchmen, prophetic intercessors. Let me show you a scripture, another scripture. Ezekiel chapter 22, please. Ezekiel chapter 22. Contextually, we begin our reading from 23 down to 31. 23 down to 31. Ezekiel 22. Watch this. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor reigned upon in the day of indignation. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof. Like a roaring lion ravening the prey, they have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in 
the midst thereof 25 it says her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things they have put no difference between holy and profane neither have they showed difference between unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes from my sabbaths and i am profaned among them 27 her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls to get this honest gain and her prophets have doubted them with untempered mortar seeing vanity and divining lies unto them saying thus saith the lord god when the lord had not spoken 29 he says the people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and needy yea they have oppressed the stranger on wrongfully now all of these things have now secured the wrath of god over that territory and he says and i sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it sadly I found none it says therefore I have poured out my indignation upon them I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath their own way have I recompensed upon their heads said the Lord God listen to me God's program will always remain at the mercy of prophetic intercessors and i believe that in this conference and even in this season there are many who are stepping into that ministry of prophetic intercession men and women like anna the prophetess men and women like simeon the prophet men who will pray down revival men who will pray down the program of god and say we will not rest till we see manchester transformed we will not rest till we see the entire europe transformed you believe that shout amen, amen. number two the second category of men that make up these end time program are called saviors saviors i like to call them the sent ones now these are the men and women who are sent across the strata of human activities we know them to be the seven mountains the mountain of religion the mountain of business and politics the mountain of education the mountain of arts and entertainment are we together the mountain of media the mountain of family these are mind control systems and whoever sits upon these mountains can manipulate the conviction of a generation and God is seeking for men and women this is where professionals come in this is where he teaches us to learn how to be sheep among wolves this is where he teaches us to be as wise as serpents and gentle as doves a ceo with a difference an entrepreneur with a difference a family man with a difference a career person with a difference a professor with a difference are we together now yes if we have people who intercede and pray alone and we do not have people who go into the system you see the command the command that jesus gave has not been understood by many people he said go ye into the world he didn't say go ye around the word into meant enter the system go ye into the system are we together this is very very important so the saviors obadiah one and from verse 17 it says saviors shall arise from out of zion and that they shall judge the mount of esau did i get that right please search it for me 21 i think it should be that saviors shall arise from zion and they shall judge the mount of esau and the kingdoms shall be the lord's say amen the third category of men very quickly are the kingdom financiers the kingdom financiers Zechariah 1 and verse 17 here's what the Bible says Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 17 
cry yet saying thus saith the lord of hosts my cities through prosperity shall be spread abroad and the lord shall yet comfort zion and choose jerusalem you may have heard me say that the name of jesus is so heavy it takes financial resources to lift it up for the nations it's important that men and women be called into the ministry of kingdom financing wealth with a purpose money with an assignment and I believe with all my heart there are people here the empowerment that is coming upon you tonight will cause you to be kingdom millionaires kingdom billionaires for the sake of his majesty are we together in the kingdom there are three assignments money has three assignments in the kingdom number one to help you live a comfortable life god is not against your comfort number two to provide financial resources for kingdom advance and number three to empower you so you are able to become a blessing to a dying world in a practical and a definite way this is the threefold assignment of money in this kingdom are we together so my first call tonight listen carefully is that if you truly are interested in god's program you must position yourself to be in one or more or all of these categories it is possible to be in every one of them in fact you should be in every one of them a prophetic intercessor one who has been sent to one or more of these mountains to establish and defend the cause of the kingdom and then number three to be an active contributor even with your resources to fund that project kingdom come you believe that shout a loud amen now i want to teach you very quickly six keys six keys prophetic keys that will help any believer to preserve revivals in the territory this will be my last charge to us and then we'll trust god to do mighty things tonight even in this place this is a message not just for believers but even for ministers of the gospel you understand and you master this that i've that I'm giving you tonight, you will be able to ignite and sustain revivals across any territory. There are six keys that are responsible for the preservation of the move of God. Did you know that history is full of many wonderful moves of God? In fact, we were discussing this with a few of the ministers yesterday after service and we were, you know, just contemplating on the fact that we've seen all kinds of wonderful revivals outpourings across nations and then many of them are short-lived because the believers even those who god uses to spearhead those moves are not taught the principles that preserve territorial revivals the move of god can be preserved and transferred from one generation to the other it does not have to just die and end now the program can end but the move should not end are we together now six keys please write it down write this prayer fully use it for your churches use it for your regions and in the name of Jesus you will see the fire of revival spread across Europe and it will remain so for many many years number one the first key that preserves revival in any territory is the ministry of warfare and intercession you must understand the prayer ministry the, the warfare and intercessory dimension of prayer according to scripture prayer achieves many goals four of them one of them is as a tool for transformation another is a platform for obtaining requests and making petitions the third assignment and goal of prayer is for prophetic legislations to be able to create things in the spirit 
and the final assignment of prayer is for warfare and intercession hallelujah Manchester if you must preserve this move Europe if you must preserve the move of God then there has to be an impartation of the spirit of prayer and supplication are we together there has to be a restoration of the prayer ministry in families a restoration of the prayer ministry in churches and i'm not just talking of five minutes oh praise god god bless you that is wonderful i'm talking of extended periods of travail in prayer that as soon as zion travails she shall put forth her son hallelujah learn to pray revive your prayer life fathers pray mothers pray children pray young people pray prayer is for everyone luke chapter 18 and verse 1 he spake a parable to the end that men men not preachers men ought always to pray and not to faint first thessalonians 5 17 he says pray without ceasing that when you get up in the morning every altar in europe is refired with prayer again Shalika Patosiata. you are in your office and while you are working you are praying making that prayer investment i pray that young people will arise that will begin to form prayer chains young people will arise that will begin to form prayer groups Shabakatosketa. young people will arise in the name of jesus christ hear me i charge every father in this place respectfully speaking make sure you spearhead prayer within your family do not get too busy for prayer when the devil wanted to attack babylon in the days of daniel he came up with a policy that challenged prayer for only 30 days Please say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it like you believe. Say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that I will pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray again in the name of Jesus. James chapter 5 and verse 13. The Bible says, is any man afflicted? It says, let him pray. I assure you, when prayer rises from every corner and every region across UK and Europe, the devil is already in trouble. Imagine that every church, every prayer group, every ministry becomes a place of prayer. Jesus said, when he flogged the people who were doing business in his temple he said my house is it not written that my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations a house of prayer for all nations businessmen pray university professors pray parents pray Preachers, pray. Politicians, pray. Career people, pray. He spake a parable that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Number two, the second key that preserves the move of God across a territory, listen carefully is the regular convergence of believers within that territory for the purpose of training equipping and empowerment let me take it again the regular convergence of believers within that territory the regular convergence of believers within that territory for the purpose of training for the purpose of equipping and for the purpose of empowerment 
Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. We read that earlier on in the morning. There must be a consistent convergence of believers. This is where the local assembly comes to play. This is where apostolic and prophetic platforms come to play. When believers converge together, it gives an opportunity for methodical mentorship. It gives an opportunity to train believers and to raise them to become men and women of stature in the spirit. Are we together? The Bible says they continued steadfastly. Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. They continued every week, every time period as you see, as, as you see necessary. There has to be a regular convergence of believers. Did you know that many of the things you read in the Bible that you call epistles happen as a result of conferences that were put together like this that gave apostle paul the room to mentor the believers from corinth to ephesus to rome he moved from place to place that even while he was in prison his concern was the church in various cities that where he could not come there physically he would write letters those letters are the chapters and the verses that you read today there has to be a platform in every region. There has to be a platform. The local assembly alongside every other apostolic, evangelical and prophetic platform for the building and the maturing of, the maturing of God's people. If you believe that, say amen. And... By this second point, I respectfully want to charge everyone across this region who is a man and a woman of God serving in the vineyard. Remember, we came to strengthen your hands, to let you know that we love you, and to let you know that there are higher and greater possibilities in the spirit. But this is my charge. I beseech you by the message of God. God's people cannot come and sit down under a ministry and an assembly where the man of God himself is not on fire. I submit to you, it will not happen. It was John Wesley who said, set yourself on fire. He says, and the nations will come to watch you burn. The nations will only come to the degree to which the man or the woman of God himself is on fire. Pastors, respectfully i charge you as co-laborers set yourself on fire in the name of jesus we crush spiritual slumber we crush laziness and laxity let the men and the women of god here in manchester apostles evangelists prophets pastors and teachers missionaries get back on fire get back on fire study to show yourself approved a workman that needs not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth let's minimize entertainment and and time wasting activities and ensure that every service is a communication of doctrine laced with power and fire are we together this is why god has brought us here by the privilege of God's grace because you see I submit to you respectfully speaking and with every sense of love that every congregation will only rise spiritually to match the level of spirituality of the priest leading them so the higher you rise as a man of God the more you give your people an opportunity to rise in the spirit hallelujah a regular convergence of believers and that means that everybody here under the sound of my voice should be part of an apostolic and prophetic community should be part of a local assembly or should be part of a platform that is saddled with the responsibility for the methodical mentorship of believers in isolation your growth will be slow almost impossible Jeremiah 3 15 and I will give you pastors according to my heart the Bible says and they shall feed you 
with knowledge and with understanding hallelujah apostle but i can know god by myself i don't need pastors you're not exactly right remember the man who the 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 utopian enoch he was already reading but he was in confusion are we together now and the apostle had to join the chariot and to tell him by the spirit he said how can i understand except some man explain to me number three the third key that preserves the move of god across a territory are you ready now an open display of the power of god an open display of the power of god an open display of miracles signs and wonders not from a standpoint of fanatism an open display of the supernatural providing supernatural solutions to the problems of men i believe in miracles i believe in signs and i believe in wonders even by the spirit hallelujah in acts chapter 19 from verse 11 please give it to us quickly acts chapter 19 and verse 11 the bible says and god wrought special miracles by the hands of joshua selman verse 12 hallelujah it says so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out verse 13 now it says and certain of the vagabond jews exorcists they took upon themselves to call over them which had an which had evil spirits the name of the lord jesus saying we adjure you by jesus whom paul preached and there were seven sons of one skiva a jew and a chief of the priest which did so 15 and the evil spirit answered and said jesus i know paul i know joshua selman i know add yourself to the list it says but who are ye 16 and the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them can you imagine this kind of embarrassment imagine that i'm trying to pray <laughs> and then the spirit leaps upon me and now beats me and then i have to run out of this place naked what, what kind of message is that shout power. power one more time shout power the bible says so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded verse 17 and this was known to all the jews and the greeks also dwelling at ephesus and fear came on them all and the name of the lord jesus this is it was magnified 18 and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds two more verses many of them which also used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men and they counted the price of them and it was about 50,000 pieces of silver so mightily grew the word of God as a result of miracle signs and wonders and the Bible says it prevailed prevailed against the circumstances Manchester United Kingdom there has to be a restoration of genuine apostolic power the power of the Holy Ghost to heal the power of the Holy Ghost to deliver the power of the Holy Ghost to transform look at our dear mother did you see the joy upon that woman that woman who was dancing that her son had been saved I'm not ashamed of the gospel he says for it is the power of God unto salvation without power we'll only be wasting our time on stage because it takes the power of the Holy Ghost backing the Word of God producing proofs to convict men John chapter 4 and verse 48 here's what the Bible says that except ye see miraculous signs and wonders ye will not believe this is such a generation they do not just want to hear they want to see number four number four is very important 
the fourth key to preserving revivals if i were you i'll just put a star there just an asterisk there please just put it so that it is for emphasis intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers to ensure continuity the intentional mentorship of younger believers younger ministers in fact generally speaking the intentional mentorship of the younger generation to ensure continuity respectfully speaking i submit to you that this is one big mistake that many revivals made this is why many revivals died because when the pioneers were old or when they passed away the revival also passed away because they did not pay attention to the subject of succession second timothy chapter 2 and verse 2 i like us to read it together very quickly second timothy you have it projected please let's read in concert one to read and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses uh-huh the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also you never preserve revival when you ignore the generation coming and this is a luciferian strategy remember when moses came to advocate the exodus of god's people pharaoh began to negotiate with him that i will let the men go but the women and the children should remain in other words the men go you will deplete with time but the women who are the guarantee for a future and the children who would take the baton keep them back and moses said no way we're going with our wives we're going with our children are we together intentional mentorship pastors no matter how great you are you will not always be on stage this is a reality it's an uncomfortable reality we have to come to terms with and you do not have to wait until you are old before you begin to mentor people businessmen find young people everybody cannot be a rebel find people who are faithful train them methodically you must have replacements for yourself otherwise you have failed this may be a hard message but i preach from a standpoint of love as a sincere contributor to our growth and the preservation of the move of God and even this revival that has been ignited here young people must be mentored that means when next God grants us the opportunity to come here we should find many prayer warriors in training and in the making many apostles in training and in the making many entrepreneurs in training and in the making I submit to you respectfully speaking that the days of superstar Christianity has come to an end God is in the business of raising men there is a mighty army that is rising not just a few mighty men but 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 especially for the young people there is a balance you have to be malleable and teachable to be mentored this is one great problem with people mentorship and succession is difficult because many people are unwilling to stay until they are trained refined and then released hallelujah the intentional mentorship of younger believers i'm praying that the fathers in the land in europe no matter how we love them and no matter how we desire that they stay forever if christ tarries one day they will join the cloud of witnesses the prayer is that by the time the fathers in every sector are about to leave that they would have raised perfect replacements for every elijah there must be an elisha for every moses there must be a joshua for every Jesus, there must be 12 disciples. Are we together? For every Naomi, there must be a roof. Everywhere people were not raised in the Bible, that program, no matter how, how 
pro Christ it was, it eventually died. Gehazi was supposed to succeed, probably to succeed Elisha, but his greed, his impatience, and his pride robbed him of an opportunity to have been probably a greater prophet than Elisha. I hope you know that theologically speaking, and based on the protocol of the prophetic, the next prophet after Elijah should not be Elisha. It should be one of the sons of the prophet who were being mentored. But clearly their pride, their arrogance, their carelessness pushed them away. And here was a very diligent farmer who made up his mind that he would pour water upon the hands of Elisha. Can I tell you, whilst you are being mentored, preserve honor to those who are mentoring you regardless the weakness you see around them your assignment is to love them to honor them to pray for them and to submit to learning you cannot mentor a colleague there has to be genuine submission are we together now it is difficult to pour water from one vessel from one vessel to the other at the same level one has to stoop down is that true there has to be that potential difference. There are many young people who would not submit themselves to learn. And this is why succession is very difficult. However, it still remains a potent key that there must be an intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers to ensure continuity. Number five, very quickly, the fifth key that preserves the move of God across any territory is influence influence God's people must rise to prominence so as to be able to protect and defend the interests of the kingdom please say influence you know what influence is I define influence as the ability to compel men through the excellency of your results to compel men to buy into your convictions, to buy into your ideologies without using force or cruelty is called influence. That through the excellency of your results, you can compel all and sundry to now buy into your convictions. Are we together? Influence. This is the dimension of the gospel that is largely missing in many territories. And I thank God for precious people like Dr. Miles Munro of Blessed Memory who emphasize the kingdom dimension. Influence is very important. Listen, kingdom advance will happen through evangelism and influence. The assignment of evangelism is to enthrone Christ in the hearts of men. The assignment of influence is to protect the program of God across territories are we together yes influence in the music industry influence in business did you know what imagine what will happen to you if a known billionaire a known billionaire in Europe gets down on his knees publicly and says Jesus is Lord gets down on his knees to worship do you know how many people will come to Jesus just by that act? Influence is powerful. Hear me, church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We may love the Lord with all our hearts, but if we do not trust God to rise to a position of influence, there is so much we may not be able to do. Influence in government. Influence across the educational sector everywhere say influence yes. I do not believe in raising a people who are only spiritual no my priority is their spiritual health but it does not stop there I believe in raising a people of influence and may that grace rest upon you according to Genesis chapter 17 and verse 6 let's read it together Genesis chapter 17 and verse 6 are you ready one to read and I will make thee exceeding fruitful. Uh-huh. And I will make nations of thee, the Bible says, and kings shall come out of thee. Not weaklings, kings. That the CEO of a particular conglomerate, a believer who loves God, 
the owner of this flourishing hospital, a believer who loves the Lord. The owner of this school, the believer who loves the Lord. I fear that if believers do not rise to a position of influence, one day there will arise a Pharaoh who did not know Joseph and with one policy, God's people will become slaves. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying for you. For everyone who has come for this conference, let that grace that can cause visibility, let that grace that can cause influence, in the name of Jesus, may it rest upon you. Amen. Hallelujah. Number six. Let's hurry, we're about to pray. Is God speaking to anyone? Are you ready for number six? The sixth and final key that preserves the move of God across any territory is an open display of love by the church to society. An open display of love by and from the church to society. There is love that is displayed among believers, but there is love that must be displayed from the church, by the church to society. Beyond culture, beyond religion, beyond whatever kind of orientation, can I tell you, love is a very, very powerful sermon. Everybody can understand that sermon. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 45. An open display of love. Hallelujah. Let's read this together. Ready? One to read. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son, come on now, to rise on the evil and on the good, and he sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. For as long as our benevolence ends with the brethren, we will not make much, will not make much impact as far as territory is concerned. You should be able to extend as a church, as an individual. Let your territory feel the love of Jesus coming from you. They may reject Jesus, but they cannot deny the love that comes from him. Are we together now? This is very important. So do not say, once someone is not a Christian, I hate the person, it's none of my concern, you are making a mistake. Now, this is the danger of fanatism. Fanatism attempts to preserve godliness using the power of the flesh. And by so doing, you will destroy people. I love Christians. I love Muslims. I love every other person in between. We are mandated to love, and this we will do. We are mandated to love, and this we will do. Europe, the church in Europe, love everyone in Europe. Love does not mean tolerating people unnecessarily. You have your, you have your convictions and your values, but in communicating it, you must do it in love. Are we together now? Yes. So you have some neighbor who is not saved, not born again, don't look down on them and demean, downplay them and say, you are not a member of my church. You, no, 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 no. Extend that hand of love and you will marvel and wonder, did you not see Jesus sit with publicans? What was he doing there? Love is powerful. Love is very powerful. Are we together? An open display of love from the church and by the church so when you see someone who is not of faith extend that hand of love tell him god bless you lend a helping hand if and when you can and you will be preaching jesus in a way that you may not even realize years after the person will meet you and say i gave my heart to jesus because I looked beyond your sermon. Your display of love was a greater sermon than even your preaching. Love. I believe in the power of love. 
if you practice these six keys you engage them in your life prayer a regular convergence of believers an open display of miracles signs and wonders intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers for the purpose of continuity you contend for kingdom influence so that you rise up the mountain and you are able to preserve the purposes of God and defend the interests of the Christ and then finally manifest love from you from the church to a territory I assure you by God that the move of God will be preserved by so doing from generation to generation if you're with me shout a loud amen. amen why are we here tonight we are here tonight to obtain grace that grace from heaven that will make us true witnesses active contributors as far as this project kingdom come is concerned why are we here to experience one last time the manifest presence and power of God to heal to deliver why are we here to prophetically declare over the length and the breadth of the entire continent that the season of revival is here why are we here to give one more person a last opportunity as far as this conference is concerned to make it right with Jesus why are we here to ignite that fire of revival and place that grace upon you and to send you out of this place with that fire that you take it to your homes you take it to your businesses you take it to your churches you take it to your nations and you may say apostle I'm the only one who came here from my nation one is a very powerful number ten is one plus one plus one plus one plus one every time you take away one ten cannot be ten again one million is one plus one plus one plus one plus one so you are that one God will find another one added to another one added to another one added to another one until we become an exceeding great army now to the theme of the conference Ezekiel 37 hmm. Ezekiel 37 verse 1 be sensitive now I sense a very strong anointing in this place the hand of the Lord was upon me and he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and he set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones the fact that the Bible tells you that there were bones nobody was born bones something happened to deteriorate these people until they became disjointed bones and the Bible says verse 2 and he caused me Ezekiel is speaking now to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry dry meant that they had been there in that state for a very long time watch what is about to happen and he said unto me son of man can these bones in Manchester can these bones in UK can these financial bones can these ministerial bones can these bones live and he answered O Lord God thou knowest verse 4 again he said to me prophesy upon these bones and say to them O ye dry bones hear the word of the Lord thus saith the Lord God unto these bones behold I will cause breath to enter you and ye shall leave verse 6 and I will lay sinews upon you and will bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall leave and ye shall know that I am the Lord verse 7 so I prophesied as I was commanded hallelujah and as I prophesied there was a noise as I prophesied over my finances there was a noise as I prophesied over my children there was a noise as I prophesied over my ministry there was a noise and the Bible says behold a shaking 
and the bones came together look this accuracy bone to his bone finances to the right bank account bone to his bone verse 8 and when i beheld lo the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them above but there was no breath in them and he said unto me prophesy unto the wind son of man say unto the wind thus saith the lord god come from the four winds o breath and breathe upon the slain that they may live verse 10 so i prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived hallelujah and stood up upon their feet they were no longer called bones they were now called an exceeding great army an exceeding great army two more verses then he said unto me son of man these bones you see are the whole house of israel they say our bones are dried our hope is lost we are cut off for our parts therefore prophesy to them this is why we are here tonight thus saith the lord behold O oh my people i will open up your graves and cause you to come out of your graves and bring you into the land of israel is someone in agreement shout a loud amen now here's how we're going to do it tonight we're going to start off this miracle session by shouting seven hallelujahs the word hallelujah is from the word halal yeshua it means praise the lord and you see the character of praise is that when you invoke praise god is compelled to respond the bible says he inhabits the praises of his people at midnight the bible says that paul and silas they prayed and they sang it was so loud the prisoners heard them then the bible says suddenly there was a sound an earthquake it came and shook the prison and my bible says and all doors open how many doors all doors open say it after me all doors open financial doors marital doors spiritual doors all doors open hallelujah so when we shout seven hallelujahs prophetically i'll begin to minister by the spirit and some of you i believe you are already touched by god but i will minister by the spirit and will take a few testimonies when we take the testimonies then we'll get into the prayer session and i would ask you to lift your flags as high as you can when we get to that point i'm going to be inviting some of the dear men of god who are here and just standing representing the priesthood we are going to be speaking and commanding the two lift gates over europe to be open hallelujah and when that happens my dear friend and brother pastor nathaniel i believe in the power of the sound of this instrument he will sound the trumpet seven times over europe and for every one of those sounds we are going to be making declarations at the seventh time we will rejoice and celebrate the hand of god are you ready for that we'll start tonight by shouting hallelujah halal yeshua praise upon my pain praise upon my limitations seven times i will prompt you and you will shout at the seventh time you're going to begin to pray that every planting that is not in me everything that has not been planted by my father it must be uprooted are you ready now one Hallelujah! Shabbat Katoska 
the shout of a king is in the midst of her. Three, four, five, six. Are you ready for the seventh now? As you shout the seventh, I want you to begin to pray. And in prayer, many of you will begin to shake off diseases, shake off situations. Are you ready now? That wall of Jericho is about to go down. Seven! Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Every sickness, you must go now in famine. You must leave now in the name of Jesus. Joblessness. That door must be closed once and for all. Shame and reproach. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Shapa Gatos get the break at the bus. It's a new season. Pray for your family. Pray for your children. Make prophetic declarations. It's a new season of revival, of fire, freedom from sickness, freedom from infirmity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now you saw the marvelous things that Jesus did yesterday. You're about to witness another spectacular manifestation of his power. Yes, sir. Listen, this is a miracle service and I want you to release your faith. We're about to pray. You're trusting the Lord for any kind of miracle, whether for yourself or for your loved one. I want you to place your hand. Let's start with healing. Place your hand wherever you're trusting the Lord for a miracle. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. You can stand in for your loved ones. You can stand in for your friend. The power of God is about to move now. Hallelujah. Now hear me. In the next one minute, with your hands there, I'm going to ask God's servant, Pastor Nat. He's going to just sing whatever song, you know, just blow his trumpet for the next one minute. Stirring up that atmosphere. The moment that happens, I'm going to begin to make faith declarations. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. His presence is here. Take your mind away from the sickness and look unto Jesus. Don't be asking, can I walk? Will I walk? No. Is it true that that growth will disappear? Is it? No. Take your mind away from it and look to Jesus. The moment I begin to pray, I will ask you to check yourself. And if you find there is a miracle, I will, I will prompt you then you will come to my left or my right there'll be a few pastors to check you and then we'll take the testimony Jesus is moving here right now lay your hands across the nations of the earth in your home watching by television through the social media and through our viewing centers across the globe make sure you connect and release your faith right now yes sir <laughs> Oh, keep your hands there. Keep your hands there. The healing power of Jesus.
this place moving from place to place from row to row the master is touching healing touching healing shala soda pariakata there's a strong anointing moving in this place touching healing from the crown of your head even to the soles of your feet now in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God I decree and declare that every devil of infirmity that has plagued your body every devil of infirmity spirits responsible for cancer spirits responsible for all kinds of blood diseases in the name of Jesus I declare leave God's people now leave God's people now leave God's people now and in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands and I decree and declare over you be healed right now be healed right now from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet be healed right now cancer be healed right now from migraines be healed right now I command every blood disease in the name of Jesus Christ be free from it right now there's someone having a problem with your you have a kidney issue the power of God is touching you right now in the name of Jesus we declare brand new kidneys by the Spirit of God brand new kidneys I command bone conditions to be healed now bone conditions be healed now there's someone you, you could not move your neck you couldn't move your neck because of pains I don't know if there's a bracelet or whatever it is but in the name of Jesus after this prayer you'll be able to move it right now in the name of Jesus the Lord is showing me someone you have some problem with your left arm your left arm as soon as I'm done praying I want you to check yourself and you'll see that the power of God has touched you there are three ladies I'm seeing the number three you've had severe bleeding this is the issue of blood the power of God is touching you now please help her in the name of Jesus I command that bleeding to stop now there is a lady I presume there might be many people but there's a particular lady you have multiple lumps at the left side of your breast multiple lumps in the name of Jesus the power of God is touching you right now and I command those demonic lumps to leave and every growth around your body fibroids lumps I command them to dissolve now there's a gentleman here you're not mad but it looks like you have some kind of psychosomatic problem it comes up sometimes and you may not recognize yourself and then you start misbehaving but later it gets restored I command that devil of insanity to leave you right now to leave you right now there's there's someone I don't know if it's you or your loved one but you are suffering from something called lumbar spondylosis the power of God is touching that person right now in the name of Jesus Christ you came here with a little child it's like that child does not seem to be able to sleep in the night the child keeps crying while it is night crying and crying uncontrollably it's a demonic situation in the name of Jesus I release the power of God over that child and I declare that child is healed right now there is a woman you are watching us from Canada you are seated on a couch as you are watching right now 
you've had severe pains lower abdominal pains the power of God is touching you right now from Canada in the name of Jesus the son of the living God in the name of Jesus Christ now I'm seeing someone you have a swelling around the right part of your neck or something some not goiter but it looks like there's some projection some swelling in the name of Jesus I command that swelling to go down now pile pile there is a case of pile the Lord is healing pile right now severe painful pile in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ someone suffering from sinuses is being healed right now by the power of the Holy Ghost by the power of the Holy Ghost excruciating pain looks like migraine headache when you wake up in the morning you wake up with that pain in the name of Jesus you are free from it now you're free from it now now the Lord is showing me someone you are not able to stand for a long time the moment you stand for a while you begin to feel dizzy dizzy and almost as though you are going to pass out the power of God is coming upon you right now in the name of Jesus Christ ah, the Lord is showing me a very interesting case there's someone um, you just find tears coming out I don't know what the medical condition is my apology but I'm, I'm just telling you what the Lord is showing me you could just be standing and tears just start coming out of your eyes you start tearing you must not be crying just like that and this has embarrassed you again and again but the power of God is touching you right now in the name of Jesus Christ and then the Lord is showing me someone you saw me in your dream and you came to me and I laid my hands I prayed for you in that dream in the name of Jesus, now is the time. The healing that you received in that dream is time for it to be made manifest right now. Now hear me. Whether I mention your case or not, in the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. Blind eyes, be healed. Put limbs be healed if you could not walk now is your time to begin to walk in the name of Jesus you could not bend now is the time to begin to bend hear me in the name of Jesus I want you to do what you could not do whatever you could not do there are miracles all over this place right now do what you could not do check yourself you need to go to the medical stand to check yourself, that's fine. But do what you could not do. The power of God is touching people right now. Do what you could not do. In the name of Jesus Christ. And watch this. Pastor Nat is going to lead us in another song. And while that happens, I want you to check yourself. The moment you find out that a miracle has happened, don't sit back. I want you to run, come and stand here and let's celebrate Jesus tonight. My God, I sense there's someone, it looks like appendicitis. Pain, severe pain around the right side here. I want you to check it right now. In the name of Jesus, that devil is gone. Never to return to you in Jesus' name. In fact, the Lord is showing me someone you've had severe pain around your molars, your teeth, your molars, severe pains. You've even gone to the hospital, but right now a miracle is about to happen to you. Hallelujah. As Pastor Nat leads us in worship, begin to make your way to the front. Please, let's give them room, those who are coming to testify. Are you celebrating miracles here? Manchester. Look what Jesus is doing, touching people from everywhere. Begin to come. Hallelujah. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, what joy has filled my soul. Check yourself and begin to make your way to the front. Something. Make your way. 
shorter than the right leg in the name of Jesus I command it to grow to size now to grow to size now I command it to grow to size now supernaturally by the power of God if that is you I want you to check yourself and as soon as a miracle has happened make your way to the front there are people receiving the testimonies already there are people receiving the testimonies already now, I'm seeing someone, I don't know if you were carried here or something. There's some kind of medical situation. I don't know what that is. But in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, I, I don't know whether it was a stretcher or whatever it is. I want you to stand up by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Miracles are happening. Let's confirm them and then we'll take a few testimonies. Yes, Pastor Nant. He touched me and made me whole. His name is High. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm all His name is Jesus. His name is Lord. thermometer I'm seeing a thermometer go up and down this is high blood pressure in the name of Jesus there are few people here who are suffering high blood pressure the moment I pray for you go to the medical stand for confirmation you will find out that your blood pressure has gone down in the name of Jesus high blood pressure goes down now high blood pressure goes down right now right now right now and those who are following from across the globe you can send in your testimonies right now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ there's let, let me just announce this let me know when you're ready but the lord is showing me someone a very interesting scenario when you eat um, most of the time you throw up what you eat again this is someone you are a lady the power of God is coming on you now when you eat that's the lady yeah I see her in the name of Jesus Christ I want you to check yourself right now that demonic thing leaves you you can come and testify in the name of Jesus Christ that when you eat it looks like you throw up again you don't have to be sick it's, it's just a demonic situation hallelujah someone's right eye you couldn't see well with your right eye i'm seeing fire in the name of jesus i decree and declare a miracle is happening to someone's right eye right now right now 
by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus please be seated for a few minutes let's take a few testimonies now let's let's work with time watch this everyone please listen to me whilst you are seated how many of you have your prayer requests already now if you are yet to write your request I'm giving you maybe the next five minutes whilst we are taking the testimonies please pen down your request because we'll be requesting for the ushers to just collate them together and then after the testimonies we'll take a few as many as we can and then we'll get into the prophetic decrees make sure that your heart is open because we're about to speak over lives and over territories right now yes pastor jakes mm -hmm, sir. Yeah. um so since yesterday night i had pain in my right knee yes and i remember when it first happened i was i was just saying in my saying to myself that i remember when you said during the workers meeting that we will not serve in sickness Amen. so that's what i just i just said and i just left it so throughout the course of today i kept like lifting my right knee up just to check yes and the pain was still there yes but right before you prayed when pastor nat was still just blowing the trumpet i laid my hands there and literally you even before I started praying, every pain, my feet was hurting from standing for a long time. The pain is gone. I was having sore throat. It's gone. Like, just Completely. like every pain. Give so, Jesus praise. In the name of Jesus, it never returns to you again. Yes. God bless you, sir. Thank you for accepting the call. You've been mentoring me from afar for, for years. Oh I got hit by a car two years ago. I flew in the air. I you rode. got hit by a car? I got hit by a car. Two years ago, I ro I flew in the air, I rolled on the ground, I don't know where I landed. Since then, I've had pain in my knee. I couldn't stand without pain, I couldn't do anything without pain. Yes. I spent over 1,000 pounds on physiotherapy, on going to the chiropractor. Nothing worked, it only helped it a little bit. Yes. As you, as you told us to lay hands, I thought, no, it can't be me. What? I said, no. Check yourself. Any pain, look at this. Apostle, Apostle, you asked me to lay hands. I laid hands and I felt Holy Ghost fire on my knee. Holy Ghost oh, fire on your knees. Holy, Holy Ghost fire. So now there's no more weakness, only strength in my knee. Amen. Walk. Amen. No pain. Look at this. Let every other limb fade away. God hit by a car. amazing sometime in 2013 in yes. Nigeria a car driving on the one way on the wrong way hit him a car hit him too yes my two leg was broken opposed to your limbs were broken my two leg was broken yes I have a femur fracture and a tibia fracture complicated and now I can't bend my leg yes but yesterday my two leg was hot I was sitting down throughout today. Immediately, Pastor Nas started singing. I stood up throughout. Run. Throughout. Run. Ah. I never see any girl like you. I never see any girl like you. Broken. Broken. I never see any girl like you. I never see any girl like you. I've seen, I've seen and so set free. Miraculous, the changing one revealed through Christ. Hallelujah. I've seen, I've really pushed this way up through. celebrate Jesus for him hallelujah that's a real miracle you're watching there yes please apostle since 2016 she had suffered from pile pile praise the Lord 
As a pastor was ministering, he called my case and said, you've been suffering of pile. And immediately, I couldn't sit properly. I've always been feeling pain, severe pain in my bum. But immediately, as a pastor was ministering. Hallelujah. The power of God is on her. Look at this. Jesus. 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 He'll never return to you again, my dear. Never. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ready for the next yes, please. Yes, Apostle, she had suffered from sinuses and a pain in a, at the back of her neck. So I'm part of the workforce. I had nothing wrong with me when I got here. So yesterday, whilst the service was going on, there was like a cold freeze that came on me. And then the pain came on my neck. I started sneezing and when I left this place, my nose was bleeding. I oh, couldn't yeah. sleep on my back all night. Came in today, couldn't move. And I was like, I'm still going to serve because the Lord has not called the descendant of Jacob to seek him in vain. So I pushed through one of our section leaders, prayed with me. And when Pastor Nat came on, I was praised, dancing up there. My arms moving, my neck, oh, the pain, everything gone. In the name of Jesus, he will never return to you again Amen. by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In Jesus' name. Yes, sir. Also, you gave a very fantastic word of knowledge. And um, thank you, Lord Jesus. Yesterday, Pastor, when you prayed yes. regarding someone not blind but not able to see properly, you know, since my 64th birthday last month, wow. my eye has been so blurry. I you are 64? Yes, sir. I was yes. shocked too. Yes. Manchester, what in the world is this? 64. Oh. Oh. I never wear glasses, but since last month, I've been wearing glasses. I was scheduled for um, surgery, for yes. cataract. I said no, because when the process was explained to me, I said, if the original is not working, it's yours with, with uh, plastic that yes. work. I said, no, I'm waiting. I've been watching and joining your, co your program every day, your miracle program every day. And when I heard you're coming, I said, I am coming. I've come all the way from Kent, from Kent. And, God has and right now, you've been right healed. Now, healed. You can see. Yeah, I can see. You can also, yes, you mentioned about tears. 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 This eye was dripping. Even I was at the PR stand. Yes. The lady saw it. It was just dripping. My goodness. The minute you mention it, it sees. Come on, give Jesus praise. You're watching a miracle. 64. Hallelujah. Oh. Yes, please. So I've had a problem. I have had a spinal problem since I was little. Okay. And when you were ministering, sometimes when I go to the chiropractors, they say it's either lordosis, spondylosis, scoliosis. Everyone gives their own diagnosis. So I have like pain. I can't sleep. I can't stand for long and everything. Even when I came here, yes. I was feeling pain. So I was just like stretching, turning around. But then when you said there's somebody who has um, spondylosis and things, I felt a sensation at my back and then the pain is gone. Bend, bend down. Any pain, no. any pain, no. it's gone. Yeah. Give Jesus praise. Yeah. Hallelujah, yes please. So, um, Apostle, I'm that lady that you mentioned that's got multiple lumps on the left side. So I've, I've had these lumps since 2011. They started on the right side and they spread to my, to my left, to my right and my groins. I've had to do a surgery on the right to remove the scar tissue. And so it's one of my prayer points that I put down. And when you mentioned it and then you kept praying, but before you mentioned it, you said, God is saying, don't, don't say, is it going to dry up? Just keep your focus on Jesus. And I felt that was speaking to me. And so I just focused on Jesus. And then you mentioned the case and you said, go and check. And this morning when I woke up in my hotel room, it was 
flared up as it normally is. And I've just checked and it looks like it's drying up. Standing amazed in your prayers. Yes, sir. I stand amazed. I stand amazed in your presence. There is, there is no Can you see this? And I came all the way from Netherlands because... You came all the way from Netherlands? Yes, because I've been praying with you online for the past two years, and I was going through so much affliction. Something hit me in the house, and since that day, my body started swelling. And my, something was biting me in my body like pepperish. I was itching on my body. So I came when I heard that you are here, because I wanted to come to Koduna, but I was told that I'm not, I cannot be able to reach there. So when I came here yesterday, my leg was very swollen. I couldn't even walk. So after you prayed, after when you started praying, my body started itching me. So my body was all bruised. So when we went back to the hotel, I, I couldn't sleep in the night. So my sisters prayed for me and we slept after I showered. So this morning I woke up, I could put on shoes and now my leg is okay. Walk. I, I saw you in the dream when you are carrying a Bible in my house like this, sitting on the floor. So that's why I came here. Did you see, did you see how swollen that leg? Walk, ma, go ahead. Look at this. Jesus. Look at this, look at this. Come on, Manchester, are you giving Jesus praise? Yes, go ahead, sir. This is amazing. Since she was 18, she had suffered from fibroids. Now she's 38. She's been under some medication and a device. The device fell off last year and she began to bleed. She's been bleeding for several months, but tonight suddenly the bleeding stopped. Come on, come on, come on, come on. The bleeding stopped. I have, you should, so when the device came off, my bleeding was for seven days and my cycle became 14 days. I would bleed every 14 days for a whole week. Oh my and I'd God. change my sanitary towels every two to three hours. Today, it's just been months. Give Jesus praise. Celebrate Jesus over Europe. You're watching a miracle right there. In the name of Jesus, you are free and free forever by the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. Yes, please. Apostle, you've mentioned the case of breast lump in the left breast, and the doctors have confirmed it. There's a doctor here. She came from the Netherlands with a one-year history of breast, breast, breast lump on her left breast. She also came from the Netherlands. Yes, and she's a pastor in the Netherlands. So I took her behind the curtains, the room there, and I examined her physically, and there was no lump on her left breast. Gone. Look at this.
Joshua, um, Joshua Selman, I watch you every day. I watch your program. Thank and you. I tell the Holy Spirit, I want to go to Abuja. I want to go to Konenya. Kon Konenya. <laughs> and the Lord bring you to UK. And I believe and I pray that God's glory ministry, my church in Netherlands and in Suriname, I, I pray that you will come also in Netherlands and Suriname. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus. Apostle she yes. had migraine like a demonic lock on her head since 2014. Tonight, suddenly, while you were praying, a hand came into her head and removed something. Removed something from your head. The hand of Jesus. Are you celebrating miracles here? And now it's gone completely. I want to work on a project, the headache will come, or if I want to go into prayer, the headache will come. But in the name of Jesus, it just you are free now and free forever by the power of the Holy Ghost. Free forever, help her in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. All right, sir. Um, so, sir, we have a case here, but um, I think the image is a bit graphic, so. Is it healthy for viewing? If not, you, you can just you can just suspend no problem. Just just tell us what happened. So um, I'm epileptic, and in November last year, I had a really bad feet, and my head I hit my head, and it stuck on the wardrobe. Oh my and god! My doctor said that. On this left side where I hit my head I lost my nerves so it it would take me a minimum of two years for the nerves to come back to normal that is if they would come back to work so while we were singing and the trumpets were <laughs> trumpets whoa. look at this the power of God is still on yes. the lady so so when when the trumpets were actually yeah. Being played, she actually began to. She fell under the anointing, and she can feel sensations now. You can feel, feel sensations yeah. now. Yes, I can feel it. Look at this. There is nothing you, you cannot do. There is no mountain you, you cannot move. If you have said it. Then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word. You're not about to stop doing it. Hey. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost come upon you. Perfection now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please give Jesus praise. Apostle were talk, talking about um, headache. Somebody that woke up this morning with headache. I was actually the one that woke up I, my head. I couldn't lift my head. Yes. But as I was praying, I just felt a breeze on my hand, my head, and uh, the pain went away. And again, number, the second testimony, I have a lump because I did a major surgery of cancer um, last year in my womb. So there's this lump that has been growing and, I, and I've been so scared to go to the hospital. Oh, but as you were praying, the, I, I, I'm not feeling any lump. The lump is gone. Check it. No pain. Completely. No pain. Completely. It's gone. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. Sing it one more time. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. Jesus, he will not return again. Lay your hands there. 
out of her now in the name of Jesus Christ gone forever give Jesus praise hallelujah draw from Scotland I had two operations for breast cancer on my left side. And when I came here, it was two, ten, nine, lots of, like three, four, multiple lungs. And right now, look, the power of God is on her, my goodness. Means it's finished. Yes, we are Breast lungs. Just put them together and then I pray for them for the sake of time. Multiple breast lungs. All of you, multiple breast lungs. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands by the power of the Holy Ghost. Your healings are perfected right now, never to return to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Let's celebrate Jesus for them. Mama here is from Scotland. She had a lump on the back of her neck. Yes. It all started in 2013. I was sleeping. When I wake up, I find all the hair, all here is on the pillow. Your hair? Yes. Falling down. If up to now, I don't have hair on my, my, my head. Yesterday when you mentioned it, I didn't want to come. Because I said, the way he has prayed to my friends, it means also me, I'm healed. But today when you mention about the neck, this thing started two months ago. I was even afraid to tell my children because I've been up and down to hospital with pancreatic infection. So when I go to the doctor, he told me it might be because of the pancreas. That's why your neck is sore. Okay. I was even failing to lift up my arm, left uh, right hand. When I went to work, one of my friends he prayed for me. He says, "No, what they're saying is wrong. You need really a very big prayer." So I said, "Oh, I heard the apostle is coming. I'm going to Manchester." And you came here. So I came all the way from Scotland, I took a bus. So when you mention about the neck, I said, yesterday I said, God, all my friends are hearing is coming up. Why not me? You don't touch. So today I saw my neck 
I'm turning around. Turn no it. No pain. No pain. Ah. I turn my hand. No pain. Yes, we are changing. here who would like to testify of God's goodness in our life. Can you imagine? Hello, praise the Lord. I'm from, I'm from London and I'm testifying for my leg pain. My legs used to pain a lot if I stood or yes. I ran for a long time and now I can stand for a long time and there's no Yes, we are changing There are still so many people coming. Uh, let's see how far we can go. My little one, may the Lord bless you, adorable lady. God bless her. Stretch your hands towards this, our precious one, and bless her from the depth of your heart. The Lord bless you. May you become a mighty woman of God like Esther. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Give Jesus a big hand clap. Yes, sir. Seems we're going to dance to this song tonight. It's got something in my heart. Towards the end of 2016, as the belly was protruding, hiatus came out and started protruding further. During delivery, it got so worse and it never went back in. Even though the doctor said it was going to go back, it never went back in. And we kept trusting God and praying to God. It got to a time that even the second pregnancy, it was still like that. Then it got to a time that we forgot, we stopped, talk, we stopped praying about it because we just felt if God will do it, let him do it. Yes, and what happened now? Sir, I didn't plan, I, I've forgotten about the whole issue. But when I came into the service, God reminded me that she had a pie. Then I, after the prayers, I took it as a major prayer point. After the prayers, I sent her a message. I said, check the pie, it is gone. She said, no, no, listen. She had forgotten about the whole issue. She said, I will be glad if it goes. Then she now sent a message. She said, because I was just saying it this morning, that is this hour we live with this continually. I said, it is gone in Jesus' name. Amen. One minute after that, she said, it seems the miracle is ongoing. Yes. She entered the bedroom. She said, when I entered the bedroom, it was swollen and unusual, and I felt dejected. But by the time I finished taking my bath, I was rinsing and I felt a drastic reduction in size. La, 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 la.
right, let's see if we can just take two or three. There are so many people. Is that man, I'm seeing someone holding his crutch or something. You couldn't walk before. Is he able, please don't force him, is he able to move now? If he's not able to move, can you move? You couldn't move. Oh, he's already moving, just, just help him. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare perfection for you right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. And then I'm interested in this boy's testimony. Is it him or his mom? Let me hear the testimony. My son, hello, Now, my son was born normal. By the age of four, he started um, started developing unusual seizures, and um, they did a lot of tests. It was the diagnosis was changed three times. Um, currently, he is under um, the leading specialist hospital, which is uh, Great Ormond Street and Adam Brooks and another hospital. Yes. But one time, the, um, the president of the neuroscience in UK, we were in a meeting, he told me, your son will never get healed. And I looked him in the eyes and I said, well, when you say that, my God is going to heal him. And one day, you will know he will be on the television. What happened now? He is, um, we were in the dream. I had a dream way back in December. I was in a conference. I never thought that I would, I would come in a conference. So you were praying for people, and I was sitting somewhere in the middle. Then you came and told me, Belinda, can you bring your son to be prayed for in the dream? Can you imagine? Yeah. So what's wrong with him? He still have the unusual seizures, because he falls anytime. That's why okay, place your it. hand as his mother. Place your hand on him. No, no, no. Yes, place your hand on him. Look at me, my dear one. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I decree and declare this seizures, I command it to leave you now. And I command the spirit that is back of this to leave you now. In the name of Jesus. Can I ask him to move? My dear one, is he able to move? Look at me. Tell him to move down there and to come back. La, 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 la. Look at this. Look at this. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare these seizures leave you now, this night and forever. If you're in agreement, shout a loud amen. God bless you. Yes. So, Apostle, the next testimony, one of our medical personnel actually found her. Yes. Praise the Lord. This young lady just told me she had been having um, pains uh, on her throat to a point whereby she couldn't eat and she has lost a good seven kilos in three weeks. Went for ultrasound, nothing, but we found her in the toilet vomiting. I think she has been there in the toilet twice vomiting. And vomiting? Amen. I've been vomiting today. Um, what? And yesterday. Apostle, you did say there's someone who's got uh, something on your throat. I did have something on my throat that was dark. Every time I eat, it's coming back and it's blocking my airway, so I couldn't breathe. But the hospital couldn't find anything. And right now? Today, I started vomiting and it's gone. In the name of Jesus, he will never return to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Ah, our time, our time, our time. Let's just take one there and then I'll pray generally my sincere apologies. Apostle if we have to take all the miracles, we spend the night here. Um, but here's what you will do. You can document the miracles. Allow me pray for you. You document the miracles and we'll do well to just share it. Yes, go ahead. Apostle, you mentioned the case of a lady that just gets teary without anything necessarily yes. happening. Two years ago, she had an infection in her eyes. And the infection has led to these tears just streaming down her eyes. She can give more information. I, at first I had a star in my eye about like two, two years ago and then later on it got better then the next year I got an infection which made this eye practically useless for a few months and then I took medicine and I was praying over it and it got better but even if the infection is gone most of the times anything I'm doing I'm talking my mom and my sister are there I'll be talking yes. to them tears start coming out of my eyes I'm eating tears start coming out of they just randomly start coming out of my eyes for no reason I'm taking a walk tears just start coming out of my eyes and they, they just it doesn't stop 
Did I, you mentioned the case of crying eyes, and I just want to say, um, the, the, yesterday you had said, you said my name twice, my name is Tehila, and so I was here when you said my name, I said, but God, your apostle has said my name, so there's no way I can leave without anything happening. And then you mentioned the case of crying eyes. And, and it's gone, oh dear. I believe it's gone. In the I'm name of Jesus, of place your hand on your eye. In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you. I release the power of the Holy Spirit and I decree and declare you are perfected right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Yes, can that be the last? Go ahead. Migraine for more than 15 years. And because she's taken in, she's not able to use the medications to calm it down. But tonight, in the course of the service, as you were praying, the migraines left ahead. What? Just a moment. Since, since my pregnancy, the, the migraines have been coming on more because the medication I'll normally take to prevent it, I haven't been able to take it. And all evening, with, because of the music and all the loud shouting, but I decided I was going to participate in yes. it regardless of all of that. And I was doubting in my head, but honestly, once you pray for migraines, I felt like this coolness just calming the heat in my head. And when I took my hand off my head, it was all gone. It's gone. It's all gone. Gone forever. Gone forever. Now, let me just speak over everyone. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, Father, we thank you for these miracles. We decree and declare that they remain permanent. That includes those, those online. My apologies, we are not able to take more than this. In the name of Jesus, you are perfected now. And for those who got healed online, we declare in the name of Jesus, your miracles are perfected. In the name of Jesus, let's shout a loud amen and give Jesus a big hand clap. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to speak over the nations. This is the time for you to receive the prophetic word. And I'm going to invite a few servants of God. We'll just stand here in faith. And when we speak, Pastor Nath is going to blow um, the trumpet. And then I'll pray over your request. And then we're done. There is still the final impartation that you must receive. That impartation is very important. Hallelujah. May I please request, um, we may not have everybody, my apologies, but um, Reverend Sam Oye, Pastor Shola, Pastor Godwin, please come, sir. And Dr. Shola, may I request that you please come? Thank you. Let's just have this for, let's honor these servants of God. Can you get the mic across? Everyone, please rise. Lift the flags of your nations. Wave it. Help one another lift it high. We are going to speak over the nations. Let's celebrate them as they come. Crown him king of kings. Crown him Lord of Counsel of the mighty God Emmanuel God is They are just going to speak over the nations of the earth and command the fire of revival right from Manchester across Europe and right down will end with Reverend Sam and just speaking over the nations. Let's stand in agreement as a united force in the name of Jesus regardless of denominational barriers or denominational affiliations. Let's, let's stand in faith and agree that revival comes to Europe Revival comes to the UK. Revival comes to Manchester and stays in the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Let's make our declaration from Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. I would like us to stand together to make this very um, awesome prophetic word together. So where you see nations, just mention the name of your nation. 
Revelation 11, 15. Can they project for us, and please? Um, hallelujah. Something is going with everybody into all the nations of the earth. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus said that the kingdom is as safe when you start a light in one part and it spreads to other part. God has decided to start from Manchester and from this place tonight, the fire of God, God's revival goes to the nations of the earth. The Bible says, and you know, prophetically we've been sounding trumpets. Now the Bible says, and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven but the Bible says, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If there are great voices in heaven, there must be great voices on earth. And the voices are gathered here tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. And the voice is saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign. You must mention a particular nation. The kingdoms of France, Denmark, the kingdoms of Nigeria, the kingdoms of Ghana, they have become, they are not becoming, they have become the kingdoms of our And it shall reign. Let's do it again, everybody. Shout it on top of your voice. Want to go? The kingdoms of Nigeria have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and it shall reign, and it shall reign, and Jesus is reigning in this place, in France, in Denmark, in the United Kingdom, in Sweden, in Europe, in Africa, in America, in the other places of the earth. Hallelujah. I want to say one more thing, and I want us to say the loudest amen. By the virtue of what God has done in this conference, the latest news and the biggest news in town is no more what the enemy is doing. Now it is about revival all over the world in the name of Jesus Christ. The mountain of the Lord's house is now established on top of the mountains, exalted above all hills, and all nations are flowing into it. Somebody lift a shout. Somebody shout to believe in hallelujah. I sense a great passion for the teenagers and the youths of this nation. <laughs> Scripture says, our children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace. The plan of the devil to bring confusion into your life and that of your children and the children yet unborn on this altar of mercy, they are cancelled. In the name of Jesus. I want you to lift up your right hand in authority over the ends of the earth and make declarations over the children, the teenagers and the youth of this nation, of this continent, of this world that their future is guaranteed in Christ that the devil's plan to erode their future is cancelled on this altar in the name of Jesus that where their names are mentioned for evil that Jesus will show up on their behalf that the blood of Jesus will show up on their behalf your children will not die 
They will not be taken over by drugs. They will not be taken over by vices. They will not be taken over by occultism. Our teenagers are saved. Our youth are restored. In the name of Jesus, I want you to make a resounding amen. It is settled on this altar of mercy. In Jesus' name, and God's people say a big amen. Hallelujah. I'd like us to do something prophetic. If we're truthful to ourselves, if you look around you, and when I say around you, around our cities, our nations, and the whole world, you'll agree, ladies and gentlemen, that there's a lot of darkness in the world. Do you all agree? But the word of God will always come to pass. The Bible says, arise and shine, for your light has come. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's do something prophetic. Can you bring out your phones? Bring out your phones. Bring out your phones and put up the torches on your phone. All over the sanctuary, all over the sanctuary. Go on. Now, let's declare. Declare over your nation, over this nation, over the city. Arise Manchester and shine. Arise the United Kingdom and shine. Arise the nations of the world and shine for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Can we declare that? Just declare it over your nation. Declare it over your city. Declare it over the world. The glory of the Lord shines upon this nation. The glory of the Lord shines upon your home and your family. Go on, let's declare it. The light of the world, the light of the Lord shines upon you, upon this nation, in the mighty name of Jesus. And one more thing, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible, no, 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 keep your lights on, keep your lights on. The Bible says, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Can we begin to command and speak to the gates over your family? over your city, over your nation. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Be lifted up, O ye everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? It's the Lord strong and mighty. Amen. Please, we're, good. we're just going to do something. Apostle led us into prayer for revival from Ezekiel chapter 37. And one aspect of that prayer is in verse 9. It said, prophesy to the winds. Please, you can bring down your phones because you want to do something very significant. He said, prophesy to the four winds. Four winds. The Bible said there came a mighty rushing wind. A combination of the four winds. I want everyone to hold your flag and we are going to go wind by wind. You will speak to the west wind. And this is one of the most important winds that must blow across Europe. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 10 verse 19, there was a west wind that blew and took the locust that devoured the land. Whatever it is that is devouring our spiritual strength in the whole of Europe that makes us pray outside of Europe but come here and we lose our strength. Somebody's going to open your mouth and say, In the name of Jesus, say, Let the west wind blow. Say it again, say, Let the west wind blow. Say it again, say, Let the west wind blow. The 
Bible says there's something called the east wind. And the Bible says when they got to the Red Sea, the Bible says the east wind came and splitted the sea and gave them what we call a breakthrough. We want to command the east wind to blow across Europe that there will be a sudden break for the church. That the church in Europe will have a sudden breakthrough. That Christians will begin to have sudden breakthrough. Are you ready to command the east wind? I want you to declare after three east wind blow. One, two, three, go. Say it again. Say it again. Paul the Apostle said, Paul the Apostle said, and when the south wind blew, we came to Petioli. Paul said when the wind blew, there was a sudden break, but beyond the break, we got to our destination. The church of Jesus Christ will fulfill her destiny in Europe. And I want somebody after the count of three to open your mouth and shout, South wind blow. One, two, three, go. Say it again. Say it for the last time. Finally, the Bible talks about the north wind. And the Bible says, come O north wind and blow upon us, upon our gardens, that our spices that are trapped within us may begin to flow. That the things trapped in us, the graces in us, the call of God on our lives, come O north wind blow upon us that our spices may begin to blow as you call on the north wind of revival gifts will begin to manifest ministries will begin to manifest anointings will begin to manifest somebody shout north wind blow say it again now, Pastor Nat is going to sound the shofar seven times over Europe, seven times over graves, seven times over gates. We're standing here in agreement representing priesthood. We've come from several places, but we're standing in Europe. This is very prophetic and at the seventh time we're going to shout and then I pray on your request and we're done. Hallelujah. These are seven prophetic sounds in the spirit. Yes, sir. to just hang on let's just perform one last function together do we have the prayer requests please bring them here everyone begin to pray in the spirit
stretch your hands towards this place and begin to declare everyone someone pray be anxious for nothing the Bible says but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving it says make your request known unto the Lord ye have not because ye ask not Jesus said he that told you have asked for nothing it says ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom someone stretch your hands and declare that these Egyptians I see today I see them no more forever is someone pray we're agreeing under the corporate anointing declaring over these requests Lord release miracles in the name of Jesus hallelujah now if we still have some more please let's have them quickly we're about to pray I'm going to give Reverend Sam the mic on our behalf he's going to pray and prophesy he's a man of grace and prayer he's going to speak over these requests we want to release supernatural miracles yeah in the name of Jesus and I'd like you to connect and shout a resounding amen as he prays hallelujah those who are who have sent their requests from all across the globe just stretch your hands in faith as we pray Reverend Sam can we just pray together everybody with your hands stretched in this direction let us pray and please your amen will be very necessary as we pray right now father in the name of Jesus we decree and declare concerning this request that from this moment let doors begin to open let doors begin to open let doors begin to open let the door of favor be open let the door of favor be open let the door of breakthroughs be open let the door of miracles be open let the door of marriage be open you will be married in the name of jesus you will carry your children in the name of jesus the door of conception is open the doors of career open you will change your levels your career doors open your career doors open the doors of finances open from today your finances go to another level the door of supernatural turn around is open in the name of Jesus Christ every magic spell is broken in the name of Jesus every curse is broken in the name of Jesus every affliction is overturned in the name of Jesus generational patterns they are broken in the name of Jesus never again will you see reproach never again will you see shame never again will you see setback in a distant land you shall be prosperous in a distant land you shall be famous in a distant land you shall be called the blessed of the lord from today i decree you shall begin to see the evidence of prayer begin to receive the evidence of prayer there shall be no more delays 
there shall be no more delays within 24 hours receive a good news within one week let there be celebration in your camp because you have come to this mountain we decree and declare let there be turnarounds on every direction it is done in the name of jesus christ begin to give him the glory and the praise if you believe hallelujah hallelujah and we call it done we declare it so in the name of jesus please celebrate the servants of jesus hallelujah now the final impartation impartations are very important because they give you an opportunity to partake of graces to partake of anointings i want to pray this is my final assignment tonight Amen. sense in my spirit to do something please pastor Nat, can you come i want you to speak over people who have been called into the ministry of prophetic psalmistry this is a man that god has raised and granted access i believe there are many people in the order of david with songs like songs of miriam and i want him to release a grace from manchester to the ends of the earth that songs will begin to come out of your spirit that prophetic worshipers will begin to arise I want you to pay attention and shout a loud Amen yes sir just lift your hands if you're called to the music shout ministry after I proclaim this word I'll sound the trumpet father I thank you thank you for what you've done in Manchester thank you for the healings thank you for breakthroughs but right now, we thank you for psalmists, for prophetic psalmists and minstrels that you are raising for sound carriers yes. that will yes. announce the coming of the king in these last days. Let there be commissionings right now. Father, you placed a grace on me right now. In the name that is above every name, you will take that which you put on me, multiply it and place on people. And they will begin to hear the song of the Lord at night. His praises shall be on your lips. Out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living waters. You shall hear sounds of heaven. I declare that your heavens are open. All those who have experienced a drought, let your dam begin to burst forth. Let the fountains of the deep begin to break out break out begin to sing the songs of the lord manchester let the songs of the lord rise from the uk let the sound of heaven rise from this land to distant lands and as i blow the shofar i announce a new season a new season for prophetic psalmists let them begin to rise let them begin to rise in the name of jesus at the count of seven, as I count seven and I blow the trumpet, you will release a shout. And as you release, there will be activations right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let the sound carriers arrive.
Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. The first grace I want to release here is the grace for encounters. There is a grace that can come upon a man and cause you to begin to have extraordinary encounters. In the name of Jesus, I stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic and I decree and declare upon everyone, men of the secret place, may that mantle fall upon you now. Receive grace for encounters, supernatural encounters, multiplied visions, dreams, angelic encounters. I release that grace upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, the spirit of revelation, access to scripture, access to illumination. I stretch my hands and I decree and declare over Manchester, over the United Kingdom and Europe, may your eyes be open to understand scripture. Supernatural illumination in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, the spirit of prayer and supplication i decree and declare by this anointing let men who can travail let men of prayer those who know how to hold on to the horns of the altar i release that grace upon you now i release that grace upon you now i release that grace upon you now number four the grace for signs and wonders truly there is an anointing that can come upon a man and cause you to not only produce wonders but to be a wonder yourself i don't know who deserves this grace but parakatosh better help that man i stretch my hands and i decree and declare especially for those called into the apostolic ministry and the prophetic ministry let this man to fall upon you now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Healing fire. Revival fire. With signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number five. The grace for influence and visibility. Listen. There is a grace that can cause a man to be seen and a man to be heard. It's called the hear ye him anointing. I decree and declare, my God, I'm seeing a gate opening. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. As I just mentioned influence and visibility. I don't know what has covered your glory, covered your impact. But in the name of Jesus, I speak to the gates of influence. The gates of visibility, a fata be open, a fata be open, a fata be open, a fata be open, be open over businesses, be open over churches, be open over dreams, be open over ideas in the name of Jesus Christ. Number six, I want to impart upon you this grace called favor. Please, I want you to believe me. I know you are in a privileged territory, but you just believe me. There is a grace called favor. And when it comes upon you, it shows immediately that you are carrying the favor of God. There are individuals who will rise from nothing supposedly in a matter of weeks that when this grace rests upon you, I stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic and by the shouting of the, the chauffeur. Let that grace rest upon you now. Help that lady. 
take that place called favor. Favor in the city, favor in the country, favor across every territory. I compel men to show you unusual kindness. I command unusual access. In the name of Jesus Christ. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. Give it to us quickly. We're wrapping up. It says, And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall come to pass that as ye go, ye shall not go empty. By this impartation, I cause emptiness from your life. Listen. It is the grace of favor that brings lasting wealth. The Bible says that wealth and riches shall be in his house. There is wealth that comes by reason of transacting your value and being paid. There is wealth that comes by reason of impacting lives and receiving the rewards for transformation. But there is wealth that comes by prophecy. It says by this time tomorrow, let me speak over someone. In the name of Jesus, I call upon the God of my covenant. May my God change your financial situation. May my God surprise you. In the name of Jesus, that by reason of this conference, let kingdom millionaires arise for the sake of his majesty in the name of jesus christ and finally we release the grace for evangelism the grace for soul winning the grace that causes men to say yes to righteousness yes to true holiness may that grace rest upon you now that you will serve the lord without compromise that you will serve the lord acceptably shout a loud amen our assignment is done Hallelujah. Can you spare me five more minutes to make one last altar call? There's no need for coercion. You need Jesus. I'm going to make a call one to five for the sake of one more person who is left. Who is saying, Apostle, please do not end this meeting without giving me an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of my life. Or perhaps someone is rededicating his life wherever you are i want you to be the boldest person to run and come and stand here do not wait for someone to be the first come wherever you are jesus is giving you an Someone's opportunity come 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 let's celebrate those who are coming to make this decision for jesus manchester one last time for tonight celebrate Can salvation come come to jesus Can you hear Come to Jesus. He's been knocking very long. Hallelujah. Someone is coming to Jesus. Let's celebrate them as they come. He's been knocking for so long. Can you hear him knocking? the door come to Jesus Jesus is able to give you a new beginning come on this final night Jesus is calling you the door someone's calling out your name calling time and time Can you hear him calling you? This Jesus is calling you. 
Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you so much for those of you. I know that I've stretched your time. My apologies. But let's perform this one last function. Most important. For all of you who are in front, you'll be given a card. And I want you to fill that card legibly. And um, it will help us to be able to follow up and to help your growth and your stability in the name of Jesus. But may I request for a moment, just suspend that so that I can lead you to pray. Lift your right hand as a sign of surrender to Jesus, this Jesus. And I'd like you to say this after me. Say it loud and clear and mean it from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I declare that you are my savior I declare that you are my lord and I declare that you are my king I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that from tonight I am a child of God washed by the blood of the lamb amen Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious ones that you have brought. Thank you for their declarations of faith. By the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. And in the name of Jesus, I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. I speak over you that the power of sin, the power of Satan, hell and the grave is broken over your life. I release you to live victorious Christian lives. I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit that you be grounded and established in righteousness. You go forward ever and backward never in Jesus' name. Congratulations to all of you. So here's what I want you to quickly do. Just complete your forms and then you can pass it to any usher around the counselors or somewhere there. You can just pass it to them. In the name of Jesus, the Lord bless you. Please return back to your seat rejoicing. Hallelujah. Now, thank you. Thank you, darling. On a final note, I want to say a very big thank you to everyone who has helped to make this conference a success. Thank you. I want to thank all the pastors in the land, the fathers in the land. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your cooperation. I want to thank all of you who have traveled from outside Manchester. Thank you so much for taking the time to make this conference a success. Hallelujah. I want to thank the men and the women of God who have showed up for this conference from Nigeria, from across the UK. Let's give them a big hand. Hallelujah. I want to thank our one and only Pastor Nathaniel Bassey come on come on give him a big god bless you i love you thank you so so very much hallelujah i want to thank my precious team all those who have come from abuja nigeria give them a big hand clap a big god bless you thank you for our koinonia family you have come from all across the globe thank you in the name of jesus christ and I want to thank the authorities, the management of this facility. We thank you for your love. We thank you. Let's give them a big hand clap. Thank you. We appreciate you. We thank the leadership and the government of the United Kingdom. Thank you for making our stay here seamless, our stay here um, stress-free. For all who have served our security team now, I want you to give a resounding round of applause to our workforce. Come on. All who have labored, is this the best you can do for my precious people? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Finally, to Jesus, the head of the church, the head of Manchester, the head of United Kingdom. We Shabbat the Lord and we give him praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Just one quick announcement and we're done. Thank you for allowing us stretch you a bit. Now tomorrow, all our workers and then our Koinonia Global family, remember our meeting. It will be 
uh, please give me the address very quickly. Now listen, it's just to appreciate the workers. It's just to appreciate the workers. You will come too. Okay, you know what, forgive me. Forgive me. We're going to share the grace this night. And the meaning of that is that, um, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I love every one of you. Thank you so much for making our stay here worthwhile. Let's rise together as we share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Manchester. Thank you, United Kingdom. See what the Lord has done. We have seen what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. The conference is over, but the revival is on.